Welcome to this edition of the Ultimate Combat Experience. I'm Mike Stidham, and I'm joined today by Killa Salvador Sanchez. Killa beat people up in the cage for years and years, heard the Ultimate Combat, but now he's gonna come talk about fights a little bit with me. Killa, how's it going, man? I'm great, Mike. <laughs> great, great to be here. It's gonna be a good card, real good card. We, we, got, we got some fights lined up. Sal and Sal is gonna help us call the action, man. Uh, what's going on on the card tonight? We got the Hatch Brothers coming out. They always come out in full effect, and this time they're coming out, both of them. It's gonna be real interesting. Uh, Jared Hatch is facing my boy Tommy, coming all the way down from Detroit. They call him Brutus, so that should be good. Start. I hear good things about Tommy. Now, Tommy's supposed to be a legendary street fighter from the Detroit area, coming out here to mix it up with one of the Hatch brothers. But your main event features the older brother, uh, Jerome Hatch, going up against Matt Stoddard, a rematch. What happened the first time they fought? Stoddard got beat down, and uh, you know what? I think he's going to get beat down again. <laughs> now, I like the kid, but I just can't get it bet against the Hatch brothers. I mean, they've just been taking it to the competition lately. And I see Especially that the Combat Cartel fight team. They've been beating up on him, but hey, Matt Stoddard has been in the gym. He's training. He's looking for retribution this go-around. It's the Ultimate Combat Experience coming right at you. Division got a couple guys trying to make a name for themselves. Corey Rasmussen and Anthony Miller. What do you know about these guys? Hey, that Rasmussen, I seen him fight also at 205, and uh, he dropped some weight to get to this fight. So uh, he says he feels better, and uh, he looks a lot better. So, well, uh, well, he looks physically like he's in much, much better shape. Middleweight Noel's Bart, check it out. Boy, Corey Rasmussen really has made a physical transformation since the first time we saw him. You can see that he's really putting his time into the gym. He's got that uh, skin tight shirt on showing off there. That's a little Colgate smile right there, Mike. He's feeling pretty good coming in here. And you know, I talked to him a little bit before the fight. He says, you know, I feel really good. I've been training. I feel like I'm in great shape. Five foot, 985 pounds out of the West Valley area. They call him the demon going up against the crippler though, Anthony Miller. The crippler, I'm telling you, if he has a smile like uh, Corey, then uh, might have made it bust out a Colgate for commercial, right? Uh, Anthony or scope. Miller. <laughs> Five foot seven, 185, coming up from Pleasant Grove and Crippler. That's something you know a little bit about, Crips. No comment. I'm going to take the fifth on that one. <laughs> right. Dangerous Dave So you said your referee for this contest, letting these guys know, touch it up, and let's get this thing rocking and rolling. Round number one your way, and uh, Dangerous Dave, he always keeps control of the fighters. Oh, that's a nice leg kick right there. That was a beautiful leg kick, but uh, Anthony Miller countering with a shot, left his head out there. Look at Corey Rasmussen. Hey, he's not right wasting up. no time at all going for that guillotine. Looks like he means business. What about that uh, mouth to the face? Is that the, or? the hand to the mouth there right there? That's a new rule actually coming out in the unified rules that you can't cover the mouth, but uh, that rule's not been enacted just yet. So Dave said they're doing a good job of kind of holding back and letting these guys do their thing. Corey Rasmussen really seems to have that on tight. He looks like he lost it though. Now he's uh, he's got full mountain and he's got the back of uh, Anthony Miller. Anthony doing a great job of scrambling and kind of making things difficult for him. You see uh, Corey Rasmussen trying to wrap him up. Now he's got him up in, in his guard. Anthony Miller pushing him up against the cage, maybe setting up some ground and pound here. I was just about to say Corey looks a lot better than he did last fight, but now he looks like he's in a little trouble with his head up against that cage. Well, you know, he looks a lot better, but he's not fighting Oso, which, uh, you know, I mean, that's no slight on Anthony Miller, but Oso's a pretty tough kid. Anthony Miller now got him up against the cage and letting those bombs rain down. Oh, he's making it rain, Mike. He's making it rain. 
And uh, boy, you can tell Corey Rasmussen is not liking that at all, trying to do the best he can to wrap one of those arms up and maybe uh, go for an arm lock or something. But now he's just gone into a defensive posture, and that left hand landed pretty it's solid. It's just duck and cover from here, Mike, as Dave jumps in there to stop this fiasco. <laughs> the hardest Anthony Miller was hit was Dave Selustead just kind of threw him right off of uh, Corey Rasmussen right there. And Corey looks like he's complaining is about he a side injury. Is he spitting out teeth? He's spitting out a mouthpiece of nothing else. Uh, now that Colgate smile is gone. Corey the demon Rasmussen coming over with a big win. Now he's all smiles. Koji Lehman is celebrating his 40th birthday tonight. What better way to celebrate your birthday than uh, step into the cage and do a little fist fight? Let's just hope he doesn't bring his walker to the ring, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, he's fighting Valentin Lara. Now, Valentin Lara has got a little bit of a background like you. He's, a, he's an accomplished boxer. I got to go for the boxer on this one. Okay, all right. I'm going to go for the boxer against the old man. Safe bet. It's uh, middleweight Knowles Bar. Check it out. Boy, Sal, sometimes you're a man of few words, but you really said had some great wisdom right there. Hopefully, Koji Lehman doesn't bring his walker into the cage. He's not only having a birthday, he's having a 41st birthday, which makes him an old man. Valentin Lara says, you know, I'm going to knock that old man into a walker. Uh, 5'11", 177. Out of West Jordan, he's an independent fighter, but as we said, he's a boxer. I don't know what's in the rice that Koji's eating because he looks like he's about 19 years old, Mike. I'll tell you what, man. Uh, he does look like he's in great shape. Those uh, man boobs he's got going on there are actually rather uh, firm. <laughs> hey, you six. talk about Koji like that again, Mike. We're going to have some problems. <laughs> Five foot six, 180 pounds. Uh, he's the, um, they call him Master Cho. But he doesn't look like Master Cho. He's the young Master Cho. He won the Cho off, if I <laughs> recollect. He did. He had a Cho off. Two guys looking a little bit like Master Cho at the show one night, and Koji Lehman won by default. The other guy uh -oh, won. It looks like they're going to call a truce right there. Well, they were touching gloves or snatching pebbles, one of the two, <laughs> and it looks like <laughs> Koji Lehman got the pebble and uh, a little bit of a measured start by both these guys. Hey, it's been a while since Koji's been in the ring, Mike, and I'm telling you right now, he's looking to test the waters as he takes him up against the cage. Oh, Whoa, my God. Oh, baby. Was that a suplex? <laughs> I'm not really sure if that Koji even tried suplex. to do that. Oh, Look at Koji, man. Goodness. He's been energized. Make short work of this guy. I'm telling you right now, Koji. Wow. Next drinks on me, buddy. <laughs> Koji Lehman. We haven't seen Ugh. him in a little while. Look at him. He's feeling pretty good about it. Oh my, who's that old man in the ring? Oh, that's uh, old man uh, uh, Christman there. Sugar bread? <laughs> sugar something. Koji, Kamikaze, Lehman, Master Cho number one did his thing tonight. We haven't seen Koji look that good ever, and uh, very, very nice. Congratulations to him. Celerity Investments. If you have a vision, we can assist. Go to investwithcelerity.com to find out how. On his 40th. Who taught you that move, John Cena? Yeah, WWE, just kidding. My man over there, Mike Christman, taught me how to slam people. Quit lying, quit lying. Everybody knows that's not true. Anyway, that was a great victory. Is there anybody you want to say hi to out there on your 40th? I mean, come on, send a shout out. Uh, definitely family and friends, everyone at UCTC, all the corner people, Mike, um, definitely Sal. Thank you. Um, definitely computer wizards. Um, definitely give them a call if you have any computer needs. Um, definitely Mike Stidham and all you fans for coming out. We can't do it without you guys. Salvador, the boxer got dumped right up on his head. Koji Lehman, one of the better slams we've seen in a long time. He's been hanging out with Macho Man Randy Savage or something. I don't know. I don't know where this kid got that. He was doing some mystery training out there on the coast. Maybe he was uh, training with a little WWE. Looking very good. Happy birthday, Koji Lehman. We got more of the Ultimate Combat. Stick around. Don Hapamer was trying to make the middleweight division, didn't quite get down there, so we had to kind of shuffle things around a little bit on the card, but uh, Rusty Pearson happy to step in and uh, pick up a fight against Hapamer. Rusty Pearson, we've seen him before, pretty good wrestler, we've not seen Hapamer just yet. Yeah, I don't know too much about this Hapamer. Uh, Rusty's a tough individual though, so uh, I, got my, I got my money on Rusty. <laughs> You're not supposed to be betting on this stuff. Middleweight knows Bart, check it out. 
I'll be honest with you, I'm a little bit conflicted on this fight because, first of all, Rusty's one of my favorite guys in this show, man. I really have gotten to enjoy being around this kid. Uh, but Don Halfmeyer just started training at our gym here, you know, and uh, good looking kid, very physical looking kid. They call him the hustler. Conflicted? What are you talking about, Mike? I'm conflicted. What am I going to tell my buddy Pete Rose when, he, when I say I can't bet? <laughs> exactly. Don Halfmeyer, six foot tall, 192 pounds. Now, Rusty, he's one of those guys that. He just wanted to get a fight, and he's given up some weight here. I actually had to put some water bottles in his pocket to be able to make the weight class here. Normally a welterweight fighting in the light heavyweight division tonight, 5'8", 870 pounds. Uh, tough kid, great wrestler, undefeated. In fact, he's dumped everybody he's fought on their head. We saw a moment ago Koji Lehman dump somebody on his head. Well, that is Rusty Pearson's specialty. That's right out of his playbook. We'll see if we just can't get to the dump fast here, as Dave Sell, you said, brings us to the center. Brings to the center and Rusty Pearson. I have never seen a man look so beautiful in a pair of shorts in all my life. And Rusty <laughs> Pearson, man, that kid makes it look so good. Are you hitting on him, Mike? <laughs> Are you hitting on him? Vicariously, man. I'm trying to get to his wife. She's so beautiful. <laughs> ah, there you go. Oh. That's what Rusty Pearson's famous for. Hoffmeyer doing a good job, kind of like a cat landing on his feet. But uh, Rusty Pearson almost dumped him on his head. Cat like speed and reflexes. I'm telling you that. He's got the underhooks. Rusty Pearson, a uh, new father, just had a, a child just a little while ago, and he was asking me, Mike, why does that kid look so much like you? Oh, maybe because uh, he's bald. <laughs> <laughs> he's short, fat, and bald? <laughs> yeah. I'm well, just kidding, gee, Rusty. Don't come over here and whoop me. He's built like me anatomically everywhere, man. <laughs> Rusty uh, Pearson doing a great job right here. Dave Selly said yelling and screaming. Oh, look, a little rampage slam right there. That was a nice job. Uh, Dave not so happy about Hoffmeyer grabbing onto the cage. Hoffmeyer, it's kind of a reflexive thing to do when you get pressed up against it. Man, Rusty Pearson really coming out the aggressor and giving up some size when he's doing it. He needs to work for side mount right here, Mike. I think he'll have, if he could just work that side mount, I think he's going to have the advantage. I'll tell you what I think he's doing. He's working to get a big, deep breath of air. He's kind of been out of the game for a little bit with his wife, you know, being pregnant. They had some uh, some problems at the hospital after the kid was born. And, well, you see uh, Rusty Pearson kind of huffing and puffing a little bit. We're not used to seeing that, and I, that's what I think he's doing. He's trying to get a breath of air. Huh. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> That's my famous words. No more profound words have I ever heard, huh? Well, Rusty Pearson systematically trying to get into full mount position. He's doing a good job of uh, what can, staying out of the guard. What can he do from here, Mike? I mean, you can can't he work a neck head. crack or anything like well, that? He, you can see he wanted to knee that head. You can't. That's illegal. That is illegal, huh? You can't do it. You can't knee the head when you're on the ground. And, boy, Rusty Pearson did a great job of showing restraint right there. And Dave Selly said getting in there and yelling at uh, Hoffmeyer once again. He was grabbing the shorts. And, and, again, I think a lot of this stuff's instinctive. This is his first fight. And he's shown very well. He's fighting a very, very tough kid in Rusty Pearson. Pearson, but you know, he made a couple of errors along the way. See right here, uh, Rusty trying to once again just kind of get that position, and Hopmeyer doing a good job of just making things difficult for him. You don't see a whole lot of offense going on from underneath there. And in fact, Dave Sully said, give him a little warning. Hey guys, you don't do well, something. What kind of yet. guard is that? Uh, he's got uh, him in, Mike. Is that the half guard? No, that, that is half guard there, my friend. And Dave Sully said, said, I've seen enough of the half guard. Get back up on your feet. And uh, right here, good exchange. Boy, Rusty Pearson just missing the chin. Works right up because oh, that's a nice knee right there. That was a beautiful knee. You can that's see right there though. Hopmeyer, when he hits, he hits hard. I mean, you see the, the the physical response from Rusty Pearson. Those are some pretty heavy shots. This Pearson, I'm telling you, he's shooting like McGavin. Every time he gets in trouble, he goes right for the legs and takes him down right away. No, he he, was, he's yeah. as good at that as anybody we've seen. He's got some sort of wrestling background. Yeah, he's, he's really good. Uh, right there, round number one in the books. Dave Sully said uh, coming in and sending these guys back to their corners. They're going to have to be some adjustments made in the game plan right here. Rusty Pearson looks like he's huffing and puffing. All those shots, they're nice, man, but it takes it out of you. Um, looks right here, Hoffmeyer getting some uh, last words of advice from Rachel. You know what? I'm tired of Dave Sellustead and all his rules. You know that? <laughs> he doesn't make them. He just enforces them. Uh, touch of the gloves right here. Round number two. Clearly, I think Rusty Pearson winning round number one in a, in a big way, lo loading up for the fences. I think, <laughs> ooh, I'm telling you, that left hook would have took him to the moon, Mike. So would that have kick. I think he's looking to end this fight. I think he's a little bit tired and looking to probably finish this thing a little quicker than he normally likes to do. Hoffmeyer uh, being, being very calculated from the outside. A uh, couple punches here. Now he's starting to get his range there, landed a jab, and starting to get a pretty good feel for things. Yes, and this is where the fists get technical. I think Rusty's going to go for a... Oh! 
Man, that was a beautiful kick, and you even thought he was going for a shot. Yeah, he set it I was going to say he's going to go for a shoot, but that uh, Muay Thai roundhouse right there looked quite oh. lovely, to say the least. And a nice knee and a beautiful shot. You see the lovely Mrs. Pearson jumping up and down right there in the background. She's enjoying the action. <laughs> oh, she's getting her money's <laughs> worth, that's for sure. She sure does. Rusty wrapping him up and got impressed up against the cage. Rusty has looked really good for a guy who's a little bit rusty, having not been around the gym for a little while. Don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> Hoffmeyer, uh, again, man, he must be wondering, man, this kid I got in my first fight, that might be a bit of a, a step to take. But uh, Hoffmeyer was not going to not have a fight today. You know, there was a little confusion over who he was supposed to be fighting. And Here. he said, I don't care who you get, just get me an opponent. And, and uh, boy, he, be careful what you ask for sometimes. That's a pretty nice little slam as uh, Hoffmeyer was trying to give him a noogie, it looked like. <laughs> Rusty Pearson, once again, man, doing a very good job. Looks like he might have left something behind, though. Hoffmeyer trying to look for a triangle choke. Rusty Pearson's got to see this coming on and maybe get back out of there. But um, you're speaking of instincts, Mike. I'm seeing a lot of instincts coming out of all kinds of different fighters, like this triangle right here. I mean, you wouldn't look at him as a jiu-jitsu guy, but the triangle, I mean. Hey, he's tightening this thing up right here, Salvador. I think uh, Rusty Pearson might be in a little bit of trouble. That thing's starting to get on tighter and tighter. If he could just pull his arm over and cinch that thing down, uh, I think we'll have a W. Wow. I got to tell you what, man. This is very... Well, right there, you see Rusty Pearson That's tapping. It. Tap dance. Unbelievable. Rusty Pearson winning 99.9% oh. .9 of that fight, but that's MMA there, folks. <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, and, and when you say unbelievable, Rusty Pearson is in disbelief, total disbelief right now. Oh, he's pissed. You know, and, and he's got a right to be, you know, he's, he's such a good kid, man. Once again, you come in here taking this fight. Oh, yeah, look at this guy's <laughs> eyes. Is that the <laughs> Highlander right there? So his eyes about to pop out of his skull. He feels really good about it, and he should. He just beat a very, very tough kid in Rusty Pearson. Uh, well, you know, you stick in a fight, you keep going at it, and this is what happens. Very, very nice job for the hustler. Don Hoffemeyer coming and getting a big win. Do you smell rematch style? Do you smell a rematch? I know Rusty's going to want one. Got bronze? Body Bronze Tanning has state-of-the-art tanning beds and home of the 30-second spray-on tan. Rusty Pearson, man, looked like he was in it to win it, but you just couldn't finish, buddy. Come on, talk to me. What happened out there? Got caught. Tap out. Man, a few words. Is there anything you're going to do different to prepare for the future? No, just watch out. Well, don't hang your head low, Rusty. Look, you did a good job. I hate to say it. You were good, but just not good as that guy right there. Great Clips is home of the $10 haircut. Also pick up $10 UCE tickets only at participating locations. The Hustler, you were out there and you hustled him, man. You made him work. He couldn't take you down as easy as we've seen Rusty Pearson take people down. Then when he got you down, you worked, you got back up, and you caught him with a triangle choke. What were your thoughts on the fight? I tell you what, I came prepared. I train every day. I got all my friends over here to support me. I had some buddies coming from Las Vegas to watch me, so I had to make it work. I pretty much, uh, that's why they call me the hustler, because I hustle my way to a victory every time. And I hopefully I can rise to the top from here. Rusty, Rusty's a really good fighter. I didn't think he was going to be as, fight, as, as tough as he was. But hey, you know, you just never, ever, ever give up. Because yeah, all these guys, nine minutes. So hey, it's the best, best time of my life. I love it out here. So what's your plans for the future? We're going to see you fighting in the show again. Uh, Rusty Pearson was like one of our top three prospects in the show easily, and you took him out. That's good. I like that. I like to fight the tough guys. That, may, that makes me fight harder next time. Fight, fight an easy guy. I'm going to come next time, and, uh, you know, I just might not give him my all, but fight a top competitor like him. He threw a hard fight. He threw a hard knee to my face. But I thought, hey, man, it's going to take a lot to knock me out. I've gotten knocked out before, but I was got, never got knocked out. But I've been knocked out, and I get back up every time. All right, buddy, you got anyone you need to thank? Any sponsors, your friends, family at home? Yeah, man, I want to thank Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. No, but I really like to uh, thank UCE for putting together this tournament. You're going to see a lot more from me, Mike. Thank you very much. Wow, Hafemeyer's a rising star beating the previously unbeaten Rusty Pearson. Looked very good tonight. Uh, it's a big surprise. I'm surprised. Uh, I'm ready to just kick your butt right now, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got more of the ultimate combat. Don't go anywhere.
In your light heavyweight division, we got a guy that's been really looking good, Jared Hatch, coming out here and starting to make a pretty good name for himself, but he's fighting a guy you know just a little bit about. Jared's looking good uh, in the ring, but not outside the ring, if you know what I mean. He's going up against Brutus, Tommy Nelson, all the way from Detroit, a good friend of mine. And uh, I think we're going to see some fisticuffs on this one. No, this one right bombs away. Light heavyweight nose bar, check it out. Sal said he knows his homeboy from Detroit. Used to hang out with Eminem down there, didn't you, Sal? Eminem on the eight mile, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, Chow Top. They call him Chow Top. Well, you can see why they call him Chow Top. Jared Hatch, um, you mentioned he doesn't look so good outside of the cage. He, he looks like Antonio Banderas. He does, man. Five foot nine, 205 pounds out of Orem, Utah. He's made his presence known here in the Ultimate Combat. He's been here for a long time, been cornered for his brother, but just recently as he stepped in and decided to become a fighter, and he's really been doing well going up against Brutus. So Brutus making his first time uh, visit to the cage, five foot six, 205. You mentioned out of Detroit, Michigan. I'm telling you right now, Mike, these Hatch brothers are really making a name for themselves. Well, you know, they really are, but I think Brutus has a uh, design on making a name for himself as well. He's the brother of True Threat, the guy who sings the song at the start of this show. Uh, been hanging around those rappers for quite some time. He's in here to mix it up, though. Oh, the only oh thing, man. Oh, the only thing mixing is some knees to the face. I'll tell you what, Jared Hatch came out with, a, man, a fire under him. Came out with some big knees and some big shots. And Brutus, I can't believe he's still standing. That's a testament how tough this kid is, man. He's still in this thing. He's shooting them legs, and he's nice and physical, Mike. If he could just lift him up against that cage, I think he could do something with that. Well, I, I think he might still be a little bit stunned from the early shots right there. He's giving us some shots of his own there. A nice uppercut and a nice right hand. And uh, you see old Hatch there. He says, that didn't hurt. I'm going to hit myself harder than that. Nice. Very nice work. Beautiful work by both these guys. Boy, Hatch landed a nice uppercut. And then uh, Brutus landed a nice overhand. Very nice exchange. But, man, you can tell these guys both have chins on them. That's for sure. Hey, Hatch is looking good in both ways. He's throwing punches and fixing his hair at the same time. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. I'll tell you what. It's like fighting with a blindfold on. He can't even see what he's punching at. But he's landed them and landed them in a big way. And then he does give that Antonio Banderas slick back after every combination. Show your right, show, show your right, Mike. Show your right. He's looking like Desperado. <laughs> Big knees, oh man, oh man. Did Brutus step into a buzzsaw? He really is taking How some big shots. How old shot. is this kid again, Mike? 21 years old? 21. He's going to be a real uh, handful if he continues to do what he's he doing. He sure right. does have a jump start on the game, Mike. If I was doing this when I was 21, I mean, I'd be kicking your butt right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't because you can't. I'd be out of a job, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't I? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Brutus right here, man. He just kind of gathering his bearings right now. He's on top. And see, this is Brutus's first time in the cage. He's used to fighting in the street, fighting behind bars, fighting with his P.O. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah, you know, he's not used to some of the rules, maybe, but he's done a pretty good job. He's not used to this. He's not used to getting stood up after getting a guy down. Usually you can pound his head in the pavement or something. But See why I'm boycotting Dave Selyestead, him and his rules. dang rules. <laughs> it looked to me like Brutus was looking for his front teeth a second ago there, man. And oh, Brutus is catching him right to the mouth right now oh. and to the head. Man, Looks like oh, he's in trouble, Mike. He's oh, in a my. lot of trouble. Oh, he... Dave Selly said able to get his tackle in that he wanted. That was a barrage of shots. <laughs> Is that the Incredible Hulk? It just Look at that. Who are you pointing at? Well, might be, man. Very impressive. First, or very impressive visit to the cage here from the, for the Hatch brothers. Man, and the older brother Hatch is looking, feeling pretty good about that as well. Yeah, I'm tired of seeing these Hatch brothers. <laughs> I swear I wish I was 200 pounds lighter, Mike. <laughs> Brutus, man, oh man, he knows. Yeah, he was into a fist fight tonight. You know, I, I really like this kid, and I'm confident he'll be back. But Chow Top making the Hatch name once again, beating up on the UCTC guys. Something needs to happen. Something needs to happen. Most definitely, something needs to happen. Maybe practice, huh? Practice. Show your right. Show your right. Addiction Motorsports has the baddest choppers on the planet. Check out their new showroom at 187 South Mountain Way Drive in Orem. Why don't you give us the rundown? I want to graduate my opponent, and next time I come in, I'm going to be a little more better. That's it. Find top name brand clothing at unspeakable prices at Big Rod Clothing. Mention UCE and save 10%.
What do they feed you hash brothers, man? You guys are not setting them up, knocking them down week in and week out. I don't know how you keep doing it. Man, it's a family recipe. It's called Hatch Magic. Come get some. So Jared, this is your uh, third fight. You don't look like you just fought for the third time, man. You, you, you already look experienced. Uh, you actually look a little more cleaner, a little more technical than your brother, to be honest with you. You guys are both brawlers, but I'm seeing a lot of things out of you I like, man. What's your plans for the future? Same thing, go to work. They call me, come fight. I mean, no big, I come to fight whoever, whenever, however. It's fine with me. Give me a call, I'll be there. A little bit of a drive, but it's worth it. Well, we know the Hatch Brothers will fight anywhere, anytime, for anything, pretty much. I'm glad to see you guys doing it in here. I'm glad you are in here now, and uh, I know we'll be seeing a lot more of you here and on TV. Anyone you need to thank? Thank my brother, my new fiance, Tasha, my mom, my uncle. My mom's in the woman facility, my uncle's in the man facility. I got love for all y'all. God bless you. Thank you for everything. All right, well, Hatch Magic pulled it out again, baby. Oh, Chow Talk there, coming away with a big win, beating your boy up from uh, Detroit there. You know, he did it in dominating fashion, too, I gotta tell you, Mike. These Hash Brothers, uh, they might just be ready for the big leagues. I think they're getting there, these guys. Maybe have a little bit more uh, tweaking to do before they're ready for the big leagues, but the Hash Brothers definitely doing their thing. Stick around, because in a minute, we're gonna see the other Hash Brother in your main event. Don't go anywhere. Your main event features a couple guys that we've seen before. They fought each other before. Matt Stoddard coming off a tough loss to Jerome Hatch. He says he's ready to do what it takes to beat him this time. What do you think about this matchup? Hatch all the way, baby. I can't go against Hatch. Even though I hate the kid, I can't go against him. <laughs> right, well, it's your main event. Middleweight no holds bar. Check it out. Uh, I think he's going to be a good fight tomorrow. Uh, we had a good fight the first time. Uh, he beat me, and I'm looking to turn things around tomorrow. I'm gonna knock him out. If, uh, if he's man enough to stand, you know, last time I we went to the ground, I ended up choking him out. Uh, if he can stand, let's stand. Um, nobody's yet to stand and beat me. You know, I lost last time because Cole couldn't stand. He decided to take me to the ground. So, if, you, if you're man enough to stand, let's do it. Let's bang. I'm pretty sure it's gonna go the other way tomorrow. I train hard, uh, got good stand up, and everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face, so I ain't got any plans going in tomorrow. I'm excited about this one. I know you were joking around when you said you hate these Hatch brothers because there's nothing about these guys you could possibly hate. I love these guys. Stoddard just said he's going to punch him in his face. <laughs> well, that's the thing you love about them. They like to get punched in the face. In fact, they probably wouldn't respect you if you didn't punch him in the face. Jerome Hatch, 5'11", 185 pounds. He's an independent fighter. And whatever you're doing in that garage, keep it up. You guys are tearing them up. I'm telling you right now, Stoddard, if you don't win, I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> hey, that's what they've been saying around the UCT since his last week. Uh, the Hatch brothers have been making light work of the Ultimate Combat guys, and Matt Stoddard said, I'm going to turn it around. Six foot one, 185, and there's a little bit of very respectful bad blood right here. Look at that stare down, Mike. That's good stuff. And Dave Sully said, getting his bad breath in the middle of it all. Uh, oh, my God, that's a gasser. <laughs> Here we go. I'm excited about this main event between Matt Stoddard and Jerome Hatch. Great match. A big knee right there to get things started by uh, Matt Stoddard. Jerome, a.k.a. Chavez, comes out like a bat out of hell, Mike. Look at this with the oh, right hook. That's where he's so dangerous. He hits so hard, and he's just so darn strong. You shoot up underneath him like that. Matt Stoddard uh, not able to, well, maybe he's able to get in deep enough to get that takedown. Yeah, Jerome Hatch is just so, so strong. It's hard to get these takedowns once you shoot underneath like that. And look at the sprawl. Him and his brother both. It's like they went home and read an MMA 101 overnight. I mean, it's unbelievable the way these guys are evolving in this sport. They, you know, they really are, and they're not the prettiest guys to watch. They're not the most technically sound guys, but, you know, they really are starting to pick things up, the little nuances that make them so tough. And right there, great exchange by both guys, uh, both of them connecting on that combination. 
See here, Stoddard trying to get double underhooks to get those underhooks with a big knee. And uh, boy, every time he seems to land one, Jerome Hatch comes right back with something. And see, that's what Stoddard oh, needs oh. to do. Right here, this is how he lost last time. He just gave up his back, and boy, Jerome Hatch settling in here. A little like, high, but man, this is bad waters for uh, Matt Stoddard. Again, again, I'm saying, I mean. Uh, uh, this is deja vu, right? Yeah. Here. I, Hatch never knew to shoot the legs. I'm, I'm telling you, what are these guys train out of their basement? Is yeah. that is that what's going on? They're training in their garage, and I'm telling you, they're just getting better and better. Now, Jerome Hatch will tell you, he trains all his jujitsu with his wife. Is that whatever right? That means. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. Whatever he's doing is working, and Matt Stoddard finds himself in familiar waters where this is exactly what happened last time. Came out with some great exchanges, and then uh, boy, Jerome Hatch able to get his back and choke him out. Will Matt Stoddard fold again? Stoddard will just not give up. He is in major trouble right here, Mike. Major trouble if Hatch can just do the cross face, little choke, maybe uh, take a little uh, note out of Sal's book well, perhaps. Well, maybe. You see right here, Stoddard, though, starting to maybe turn and up, get his hips up. And, well, he just might have gotten out of trouble right there. Wow, very impressive. He is one crafty individual as he's in Hatch's guard right now. He's, uh, if I was him, I'd look to get out of that guard, maybe work the side mount or something and uh, look for a little something. Well, I'll tell you, you know, Hatch's guard isn't the most dangerous guard to be in. I mean, Hatch isn't really a submission guy. Uh, he knew what to do when he had his back, but I don't know this is such a terrible place for Matt Stoddard to press him up against the cage and maybe do some uh, ground and pound right here. Looks like he's working for an arm bar or something there. Uh, yeah, but it was ugly. That's where Jerome Hatch's weakness is. He's a rough and tumble kid, but his jiu-jitsu is not quite where it wants to be. And Matt Stoddard, I think, doing a good job of pounding away. He really averted a bad situation just a moment ago, and now it looks like he's making Jerome Hatch pay for it. He is making him pay for it. And I'll tell you what, that's uh, the athletic commission over there getting more than they can handle right there with a little finger to the face. They're right there in the splash zone right there. They're getting some blood and sweat splash. I'm looking at Bill Cobra just loving it. He's loving it. Oh, he better <laughs> love it. He's getting paid. Yeah. <laughs> Round number one in the books, and that's a tough one to score, I'll tell you, because Jerome Hatch did have the back of Matt Stoddard. Matt Stoddard was uh, in with him punch for punch on their feet. Great action back and forth. You're going to definitely want to come back for round number two. Uh, looks like we're going to roll right into round number two here. Dave Sice said going to get him started. Round number two. Oh, what was that? Was that, was that uh, Ralph Macchio? <laughs> you know, we've seen Jerome Hatch use that technique time and time again. He got it from me, Mike. He got it from me. Boy, uh, the graceful moves of Sal Salvador Sanchez coming out in uh, Jerome Hatch. Right here, not a whole lot of action, but uh, I'm telling you, it's not the most action filled moments in the fights right here, but every one of these shots are landing very hard. If you're sitting ringside, you can hear them. They're just thudding uh, back and forth. This has actually turned out to be a pretty good matchup. You know that? No, I, yeah, I really felt like these two guys are very well matched up. In fact, there are four or five guys at the UCT seat I think are very good matchups for Jerome Hatch, and, and he's he's beaten all of them. He's, he's lost to a couple of them, but he's beaten them all. And uh, he looks to, he's looking to make the cl clean sweep here. He says, once I beat him all twice, then I'm done with him. I'm going to move on. Oh, he's going to be content with twice, huh? You know, he's not going to let him come back and fight him again. Yeah, these Hatch brothers sure do have their hands full because, I mean, the, like, they fight like every week. And, you know, that's the thing about him. These guys, they want to get better. They want to get all the cage experience that they possibly can. And the amazing thing is these guys do it for a hobby. They almost laugh at the guy that trains because they said, you keep on training. We're just doing this stuff for fun. We come in on Saturdays, and that's all we do. Look at him climbing around the cage right there, Mike. I'm telling you, he must watch a lot of UCE because he is learning a few tricks right there. Uh, and all the while, he's just getting better. Whether he's trying to or not, he's getting better. See what I'm saying about this TV, Mike? These kids are watching too much TV and listening to too much rap music. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, right there, man. I'm not sure what happened. I oh. think that uh, Jerome Hatchett might be a little tired because he rolled right over and gave his back up to Matt Stoddard talk about it he's giving it up right now like he's about to give up some teeth if Stoddard keeps on punching him in his mouth like that yeah I really do I, I I don't know what happened where maybe Jerome just ran out of gas but it looked like he just conceded the match right there gave up his back and now he's stretching moment, him out he That's is for sure. we, we saw a moment ago when Jerome Hatch was able to uh, get the back of uh, Matt Stoddard he wasn't able to finish him can Matt finish him though hey look at this Hatch didn't he had a full set of hair when he before he came in this match <laughs> The worry is making the hair come in 
during that. That's what Jerome Hatch is so good at. He just uh, he, he, he plays possum for a minute and then he'll give a burst on you and and usually just like that right there he, he gets a better position out of it does a great job of that Stoddard's really getting rough and tough with this guy he's kind of impressing me Mike and I don't say that about much people well you know especially when they wear shorts like that you know you don't think they're gonna get rough and tough in the fight but Matt Stoddard he is kind of getting rough and tough landing some big body shots some big knees to the body some big punches to the body some big elbows to the head right there he is and when he's not elbowing to the face he's really digging the elbow you know making yeah. the hatch really uncomfortable and that's one thing that these fighters lack is the ruggedness that Stoddard is putting on hatch right now he really is and it looks like we're going to see round number three both men have now had their opponents back and have not been able to uh, finish him off the rounds over the cage doors open but they were still going at it Dave Sully said you missed the tackle right there bro um, I've had enough and then he's hearing about it too old Chavez's brother letting old Dave Sully said no that's uh, the round was over man Matt Stoddard looking a little bit tired going back to his corner he's got two minutes to get ready rock and rolling my goodness the lovely Gerards are here we got one of the ultimate combat when we come back Ultimate combat experience if you're just joining us man. Oh man. Have you missed a great first two rounds of three? Between Matt Stoddard and uh, Jerome Hatch this a rematch Jerome Hatch winning the first fight But man this one right here is as close as it could possibly get and uh, really good action all the way through Hatch most definitely has his hands full this fight Mike And uh, I don't know who to hit first look how strong brother. he is man He just pushed Matt Stoddard's head down to the mat and then he let him up <laughs> but Stoddard's in it to win it. He looks a little tired, but he just keeps on coming back he, he does, but he just keeps getting ragged off. The, the strength of Jerome Hatch, that big right hand had to, uh, feel, he had to feel that one right there. Uh, I'm telling you right now, these guys, if he keeps on throwing punches like that, someone's going to be catching Hatch's teeth. <laughs> right here, Jerome Hatch. Man, you know, this is where fatigue is going to become a factor. This is where all that lack of training just yeah. may do you in because. You know, uh, it's it's gut check time, and, and it's not necessarily gut check time for either one of these guys because we know they both are very, very strong uh, gut-wise, but but they're just out of gas. True that, Mike, true that. This is where the run-in and everything comes into play right here in the third round when it gets nitty-gritty as well, he uh, shoots them legs right there. Chris been telling Matt Stoddard to foot stomp him, but <laughs> if Stoddard has a head on his shoulders, he will not listen to Chris when I tell you that. Well, he's got to get his hooks in. You know, he's, he's way up high. He's, he's behind him. He's doing a good job of staying back behind him. But he's got to get his hooks in and uh, he's got to get busy back here because that's what Jerome Hatch does. I mean, he, he does that possum thing. And I'm not sure if Dave says he grabbed the cage there or what. I, don't, I didn't see him grab the cage, but apparently Dave did, and uh, he's standing him back up. You can't gain position by grabbing onto the cage. You can't. Oh, there goes my repertoire. <laughs> well, that's uh, that, that's a pretty bad deal for uh, for Jerome Hatch. I mean, he was on top of a very tired Matt Stoddard, and now they're back up on their feet. And you can see Jerome's real tired yeah, as well. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, Hatch is looking real tired right now. See, now Stoddard wants to capitalize on this and just stay busy. Just in case this goes into decision, maybe he could win on points. I well, mean, you know, I, I totally agree with you. However, uh, Stoddard's tank's on a little low, too, as well. He's doing a nice job of L or knee in the body and knee in the arms right there. Got to stay away from the head uh, on the ground there, except for punching. He's landing some big shots. That right there, I think, is going to win the fight for him. Right there, he just put him over on his back, and he can finish with a nice barrage here. Doing a great job, and as you mentioned, you got to outpoint him. Uh, you want to try to put this thing away, but you certainly want to try to outpoint him. Most definitely as Hatch tries to climb off the cage. That's really unexpected. Really unexpected out of these guys. These guys, I mean, at first thought, I thought they were just brawlers, street fighters, but... Uh, now Hatch has got enough fights that he's starting to get rather technical. With 10 seconds left, it looks like we are going to see a judge's decision on this one. And, boy, this is going to be a tough one to score. I think Matt Stoddard is going to come away two rounds to one. But it was, it's a hard fought match and, and really I couldn't complain about any judges decision at this point. Great fight. Great Raise fight. your hands up there starter. He should feel good about that. And you know, he won that third round and that was a third and deciding round. I think he won it rather big. 
I, I, I would really be surprised if he doesn't win this fight and, and, and you know he's got to feel good about his performance and Jerome has got to feel pretty good about it too. I loves me some starter. Come on starter. I got your back like a bra strap baby. <laughs> right there Jerome Hatch's wife. Uh, she's so beautiful. Let's listen to what the judges had to say. A lot of drama here, taking a long time to find out who won this thing. But it looks like Matt Stoddard, the blanket, vindicating himself, and that's really the way I saw it. 29-28, great fight. Uh, it was unanimous. All the judges saw it the same way. Now this sets up the, uh, the rubber, rubber match. match between these two. I can't wait. Are you Army strong? Find out what it takes to be a soldier in the U.S. Army at GoArmy.com. Jerome Hatch, man. I'm telling you, I uh, watched that fight real close. Uh, I, I thought it could have went either way, but the judges said you came up shorter than a midget in quicksand, man. What do you got to say about that? Well, you know, there's three people in the UCE that I fought once and beat them all the first time. Second time, they beat me. I keep underestimating them. And now I got three rubber matches. I'm going to bring it hard this time. Rubber match, you're saying you want a rematch? You want to go best out of three? Yeah, best out of three. You know, with three different people that I have, have lost to and won. So, you know, I didn't come in here and do my game. You know, I thought I'd be ready for it. But uh, he fought a lot smarter than I did. So, he trained. He trained for it. Can't say nothing about that. Hey, everyone give it up for, uh, Chavez, Jerome Hatch, he did a great job out there. I think he did good. The fans, I'm sure you got fans out there that think you did good. Anything you want to say to everybody out there before we sign off here? Yeah, I want to tell everybody thanks for coming out. You know, uh, my brother come up big and I come up short. Uh, thanks for coming out and supporting us. Like you said, thanks mom and thanks uncle. Give a shout out to the Utah State Prison, all the inmates and fans we have there and uh, everybody outside. So I'm gonna keep my Ooh, I'll second third that one, baby. Yeah. yeah, I'll keep my head up and I'll be back. So learn from it. Skull Candy, the official headphones of the UCE. Check out their complete line of headphones and accessories at SkullCandy.com. Matt Stoddard, you had a rematch with the guy you lost to, Jerome Hatch. You came out, he caught you a few times, but you controlled the fight. Living true to your nickname, the blanket party. You were all over him on the ground. What are your thoughts on the fight, buddy? Uh, he's, he's a tough kid. Uh, I'll give him that rematch whenever he's ready for it. Uh, he gave me a rematch. Uh, he choked me out in the first fight, and I wasn't going to have that tonight. So I came out hard and took him down a few times and controlled the match. All right. Now, we were told you weren't going to be fighting this much this summer. You're running your own company, Stoddard Landscaping, but you're in here fighting all the time, man. You getting a workout out there or what? Yeah, I do. I actually, a couple of my guys came here to fight me to, or come watch me fight tonight. Uh, hey, it's good training out there, digging trenches, laying sod, uh, keeping me ready. I don't have a whole lot of time to go to the gym right now, which kind of isn't too good, but I get my training out there, so what can I say? All right, Matt, what's your plans for the future? Are you going to take a little time off and work, or uh, they're going to call you on Monday? You'll say, yeah, I'll fight Saturday, no big deal. Uh, I don't know. Depends if they need, depends if they need someone to fight. Uh, hey, I'm ready pretty much any time. I had a month off between my last fight and tonight, so a month in between fights is pretty good, I think. All right, Matt, anyone you need to thank before we uh, sign off here? Yeah, I'd like to thank everyone, my coaches. You, Phil, who's one of my coaches. He's a, he knows a lot about fighting. It's good to listen to him. I want to thank my family. Uh, I have four brothers, all four of my brothers, Mark, Joe, Luke, and Nick. And I want to thank my mom for coming to watch me all the time. And my grandma, it's her birthday today, so... Happy birthday, Grandma, 85. Yeah, happy birthday to Grandma Stoddard. Sugarloaf over there, though, he did yell foot stomp. You got a foot stomp. I, I, I got to give him a little bit of credit, buddy. But uh, Matt Stoddard, dominant performance tonight. Still have a bright future. Can't wait to see uh, Hatch Stoddard 
three here pretty soon. We'll see you again pretty soon, buddy. All right, thanks. I'm ready for that rematch anytime. Wow, the end of a pretty good night of fights, but Salvador Sanchez, you were wrong every time tonight. You know what, Mike? I told you earlier what I'm going to do to you, right? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sorry. You know, we're going to have to cut, cut, cut the camera. Me and you are going to We got a case right listen, here. When I'm done taking care of this light work, we've got more of the Ultimate Combat next week, so uh, tune in next week.